All right, next we want to take a look at using some uh, using this shell method that we just discovered to compute some actual volumes. So we're going to start uh, here with example two, which is the same as example one. R is the region bounded by this curve, y equals 4x minus x squared, uh, and the x-axis. And we said uh, 4x minus x squared looks something like this, where the left endpoint is 0 and the right endpoint of this region is 4. And R is this region here between the curve and the axis. So we want to find the volume of uh, the solid of revolution formed by revolving this region R about the y axis. And we have already sort of discussed why the washer method is a bad idea here. And instead, we want to think about the shell method. So the shell method has me taking some vertical slice here and revolving it about the axis, about the y-axis here, to form some kind of, uh, to form some, some shell. Uh, and we said that the surface area of that shell, well, the surface area is going to be uh, 2 pi times the radius of this circle, and the radius of this circle is exactly the x value of the uh, coordinate we're at, so the radius was 2 pi x, uh, times the height of the shell, and the height of this shell is going to be exactly equal to the y coordinate on the curve. Well, the y coordinate on the curve here is exactly 4x minus x squared. So I found the surface area of this shell, and what I need to do is I need to integrate this surface area from the left endpoint of my region, which is 0, all the way to the right endpoint of my region, which is 4. And this looks like a very manageable integral. I can simplify a little bit, factor out the 2 pi, 0 to 4. I can distribute the x in, so I've got a 4x squared minus an x cubed. And now all I have to do is apply my power rule. So this is 2 pi times, uh, we're going to get 4x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4 over 4, evaluated from uh, 0 to 4. And so I can plug in some numbers here. 2 pi times uh, 4 times 4 cubed over 3 minus 4 to the 4th over 4. Uh, let's see, minus this thing evaluated at zero. Oh, but it evaluates to zero when x is zero. So we just end up with this quantity here. Great, so uh, we have some volume of some region here. And uh, that's exactly what we were looking to do. This ends up being fairly straightforward once we've done the setup. Of course, the tricky thing with all of these solid of revolution problems is actually setting them up. Once we've done that, we're theoretically capable at this point of doing all of these integrals. Let's take a look at another example. So this time we're going to let r be the region bounded by the curves y equals 2x plus 1, y equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 7. What is the volume of the solid formed by rotating r about the y-axis? So again, we'd better start by just drawing what this region looks like here. Uh, let's see. So I have x equals 2 and x equals 7 as a couple of uh, relevant, relevant quantities here. So let's put those on this axis. Uh, let's see. I also have the lines y equals 1, which is going to be somewhere here. and y equals 2x plus 1, which is a line with uh, slope 2 and intercept 1, so I know it looks something like this. Again, kind of using geometric intuition here is really important uh, because I need to know what the shape of this, what the shape of this figure is. And so the region that I'm looking at is the region bounded by all four of these lines, which looks something like this. All right, I want to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving this, uh, revolving this region about the y-axis. And in order to find the volume of that solid, I can think again about these vertical slices that I want to be creating here. 
these vertical slices are, we know we need to integrate uh, from the left endpoint, which is 2, to the right endpoint of this region, which is 7. We need to integrate the surface area of one of these shells that we get by revolving this vertical line about the axis. The shell, of course, has, um, has radius, or circumference, rather, 2 pi x. And it has height equal to the y value of the upper curve minus the y value of the lower curve. The y value of the upper curve is 2x plus 1. Since that's the curve, y equals 2x plus 1. And the y value of the lower curve is 1, because it's the constant function y equals 1. So I've got the uh, y value of the upper curve minus the y value of the lower curve. That's the height of one of these shells. And I need to integrate this surface area function from x equals 2 to x equals 7. And again, we can simplify things a little bit here. I've got the integral from 2 to 7. Uh, let's see, this 2x plus 1 minus 1 is just 2x. So uh, all of my constants combined give me a 4 pi. I'm left with an x squared on the inside of the integral. And I, again, uh, use the power rule here. So this is 4 pi times x cubed over 3, evaluated from 2 to 7. And uh, the actual quantity then here is going to be 4 pi times whatever 7 cubed is, divided by 3, minus 4 pi. I suppose we know what 2 cubed is. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. And again, divided by 3. So whatever this magic number comes out to be uh, is the volume of my solid here. All right, one more example, uh, an example again where the graphs of these functions are a little bit more difficult to come up with, but we can again kind of use our reasoning skills in order to figure out uh, what the right thing to integrate is here. So r is going to be the region bounded by the curves y equals log x over x squared, y equals 3 over x squared, and x equals 10. We want to find the volume of the solid formed by rotating r about the y-axis. Great, so uh, again, we want to think about what this region might look like. Um, we know we're going to have, uh, let's see, we know we're going to have x equals 10 playing an important role here. So let's, let's add that. Uh, we also have these two mysterious functions, y equals log x over x squared and y equals 3 over x squared. And well, we're not really sure what they look like. Um, so what we want to do then is we want to uh, use some of our arithmetic, use the intermediate value theorem in order to find out which one is larger and maybe where they intersect, because that's going to be really important here. Um, where they intersect is going to determine on which side of 10 uh, this region is going to live. So let's let's think about this a little bit a little bit more. Uh, we know that these functions here, uh, natural log of x over x squared and 3 over x squared, these are, again, both continuous functions on the interval uh, from 0 to infinity. Uh, the, again, the only kind of problems that we can run into here are if we're dividing by 0. But if x is positive, that doesn't give us any issues. And the natural log has problems if we're having a negative uh, input, but again, we're only going to be thinking about x values bigger than zero here. Uh, so, so that's um, well, again, we're, we don't have any problems with the continuity. So, since they're continuous, the only time that uh, they can change order, whether it's one going from the larger function to then being the smaller function, is going to be when they intersect. So, our goal here is to find when do these functions intersect. And they intersect when natural log of x over x squared equals 3 over x squared. I can multiply both sides by x squared here to get natural log of x equals 3. And then I can uh, take e to both sides. And on the left-hand side, I get x. And on the right-hand side, I get e cubed. Now, e cubed is around 20, as it turns out. 
doesn't really matter exactly uh, where it is, but it, it is about 20, and the important thing is that that is bigger than 10. Great. So uh, let's see. So let's put e cubed on our axis here because we know that's where these two uh, functions are going to intersect. To the left of e cubed, one of them is always larger, and to the right of e cubed, another of them is always larger. So our goal is to figure out, well, which one is larger uh, on the interval from uh, 0 up to e cubed. So let's let's draw a little picture here. We, we aren't sure which one the blue one is, uh, but it is. And we also aren't sure what the red one is, but again, it, it is. Um, and we know that the that the picture looks something like this, where these two functions meet up. So in order to figure out which one is larger, uh, we can just simply try plugging in a point. So for instance, we could plug in 10. 10 would be maybe a nice a nice thing to think about. And if you uh, look at the y value on the graph of log 10 over 10 squared, you're going to find out that this is less than 3 over 10 squared. So in fact, the graph of log x over x squared is our red graph here. And 3 over x squared is our blue graph here. So then the region that we're interested in is this region here. All right, with that reasoning out of the way, we can go ahead and we can proceed to thinking about the volume of this solid formed by rotating it about the y-axis. We're going to uh, take a look at some kind of shell method again here. Uh, again, maybe you can kind of see that the disk or the washer method would be a not so good method to use. Uh, if I'm thinking about these uh, horizontal slices, I would run into the problem of sometimes the blue graph here is to the uh, is is the rightmost x value, and sometimes maybe this red graph is the rightmost x value, and without even knowing what the shapes of these graphs are, uh, we might we might run into some problems where this red graph or this blue graph maybe fails the horizontal line test, and we have to break up this integral into a bunch of different regions, and it's it's quite challenging. Uh, instead, we know that this blue graph is always above the red graph, and so we can simply say, well, when we're computing the volume of this solid, we know which function is larger, we know which function is smaller, and the shell method is designed to help us out a lot with that. So great. So we need to integrate the surface area of this shell formed by revolving this vertical green line about the y-axis. And so we have an integral from the left endpoint of my region, which we've said is 10, to the right endpoint, which is e cubed. And we, let's see, want to integrate uh, 2 pi times x, of course, because this is the circumference of this shell, multiplied by the height of this shell. And the height of this shell we know to be the y value on the blue graph, which is 3 over x squared minus the y value on the red graph, which is log x over x squared dx. Great, so we have an integral. Let's simplify a little bit. So we're going to have 2 pi, uh, let's see, integral from 10 to e cubed. I can distribute the x in, so I'm going to get 3 over x minus natural log of x over x. Uh, I can combine those fractions, and we're left with 3 minus log x over x. Great, so we have an uh, integral here. It doesn't look like we can solve this by inspection, and so we're forced to use a u substitution. Let's set u equal to 3 minus natural log of x. If we do this, then we know that uh, du dx is going to be minus 1 over x, which is going to tell me that minus du equals dx over x. And in doing this substitution, then, we have uh, the integral now. 3 minus log x becomes u, and the dx over x there is du. 
So let's see. So now we want to uh, convert these x values for the limits of integration into u values. Uh, the x value of 10 corresponds to the u value of 3 minus natural log of 10. The x value of e cubed is going to correspond to, well, let's see, let's write this out, 3 minus uh, natural log of e cubed. Well, natural log of e cubed, that is 3. So this is 3 minus 3, which is 0. Lovely. All right, great. So now that we have this computation done, uh, we can actually do this integral. So this is 2 pi u squared over 2 evaluated from 3 minus, oops, we, I forgot my minus sign, minus du. So we have a minus 2 out front here. Uh, let's see, 3 minus natural log of 10 all the way up to 0. And the 2s are going to cancel, leaving me with a minus pi. Uh, if I evaluate this at um, if I evaluate this at zero, I get zero. If I evaluate this at three minus uh, natural log ten, I get uh, three minus natural log ten squared. And so in the end, this number ends up being pi times three minus natural log of ten squared. Lovely. So perhaps not an answer that you would expect based on uh, the, the sort of complexity of these functions. The, I mean, this works out to be a very nice, simple sort of answer for our volume of this solid. All right, I think that's all for the shell method in terms of integrating with respect to x. We also want to practice the shell method and thinking about it when integrating with respect to y. So that will be the topic of the next video.